I'm just saying, is this mic working okay? And I'll just tell you all right now, I'm not going to stand up here. I'm going to come down here with you guys. Um, I was telling everybody when I got here, you got to understand, I grew up in the Funiac. Um, I spent my um, time, actually as a late teen, early 20s, um, I spent some time in this building um, before it was a church. And I was telling, telling somebody before, I was like, let me just be honest. This isn't the first time I performed in here. <laughs> a little different situation though. So we're going to kind of go through some things today. Uh, re- listen, I'm really excited. This is so fun to be able to come. This is um, this is a home game. This is uh, my people. Um, this is uh, this is us. Um, this is our community. This is the group that um, that I love spending the most time with. And so I'm going to go through a couple things. Let me see if I get this queued up. Maybe not. You get me queued up. So as I'm doing that, let me just kind of just um, tell you a couple things that we're going to be um, talking about today. I'm going to be talking about what the difference is and that I see between good and great agents. And listen, th- this is the thing is, I'm not speaking from a place, and, and if you can't tell by the accent, I don't, I'm not a professor. I don't speak from theory. These are the, a lot of the things that I'm talking about are things where I've made the mistakes and I've had to correct over my 30-year career. Um, I was telling somebody, it's kind of interesting. I started selling real estate in 1994 on 38. And with our agents, when they come in, they're like, there's nothing to sell. Wrong guy. There was a grand total of $36 million for the entire year on all of 38 in 1994. There was 36 million since we've been in here eating lunch on 38 this morning. So what I want to talk about is some of these characteristics, some of the traits, some of the things that you can lean into that will make a difference in your business. Now, a couple things on this. I'm going to do a couple of different ways. I'm going to give you the point, but I want to give you some practical ways that you can apply these. I want to give you some actionable steps. At the end, just so you know, I'll have a little QR code that you can get these slides so you don't have to take pictures and things of some of these specific marketing strategies that you can utilize. But I'm going to start with this. Um, why are you here? Um, in reality, my grandfather was a pastor and he said it this way. If you'll treat everybody like they're hurting, you'll be right about 90% of the time. Uh, now let's be real. We all walked in here with stuff. And if you're in real estate, let me just say this. I, I think realtors may have been covered when they were babies. They just like to self-abuse themselves. I mean, we just it seems like we just draw drama sometimes because of the business we're in. So it's not a matter of if, it's when are the issues going to come. And how are we going to get past those? And in reality, it's going to come from why are we here? What is that reason that we push past all the problems to serve the clients that we're at, to live the life that we're able to live, and to actually make an impact in our community? So everybody's different with this, but think about what it is and why you do this. Because ultimately, if you've got that anchor held somewhere of why you're doing this, it doesn't matter which way the tide moves. You can always get back in line with that purpose for your life. For me, it's just serving people at the highest level possible. I just want people to be better for having been around me. So whatever that is for you, find what it is. And that's the anchor where when I get drifting away, I try to pull back towards that thing and specifically that. So let me talk about some of these specific things. So what are those differences? The first one is this. Great agents do daily what good agents do occasionally. Now think about this. This is every area of our life. I mean, you know, if, if, if we don't go consistently to the gym, it's going to look different than it does for the person who goes to the gym. If we eat differently every other day, it's going to look differently. If we don't invest in the relationships we have, they're going to look different than the ones that we invest in on a daily basis. It's the same way in our real estate business. It's one thing to have a call day. It's a whole other thing to have a call hour every day or whatever it is for you. It's one thing to send out a mailer to a farm one time, it's a whole other thing to consistently, month after month, to do those things. So I want to kind of go through a couple of these things. I don't know, have any of y'all ever heard of this Rule of Five by John Maxwell? Um, let, me, let me tell you what the Rule of Five is. Um, and I just think this is just such a great concept. And basically what John Maxwell says is, is that if you were to have a tree in your backyard, and you were to take an axe, and every single day you walked out back, and boom, you hit that tree. Boom, you hit that tree. You hit it five times, and you put the axe down. And then the next day you came back, pick the axe up, you hit the tree, boom, five times, and you put the axe down. Listen, if you do that every day, it's not a matter of if, 
It's when will that tree fall? Now listen, some trees are smaller, they'll fall faster. Some are bigger, it's going to take a little while longer. But if you stay consistent in striking that tree, sooner or later that tree will fall. We've all got goals for our business. So what I want to do is just kind of go through a couple things with, like what are the rule of five for real estate agents? Because I kind of try to develop this for my life, for my business, and for some of the agents that I get to work with. The first thing they see is, is they focus on a next 10 list. And I'm going to get real practical with this. I'm going to show you an example of this, but I'll give you the background of this. We always want to focus. How many of us have had those listings that somebody said, I'm going to list with you in a year, or I'm going to list in six months, or I'm going to buy this house in a year, and then all of a sudden we look up and the MLS hits and it's their house listed with somebody else. And the problem is, is it's because we lose focus on that. We, we lose contact there. So what the solution that we found to this is, is to have a next 10 list. Now here's what a next 10 list is. A next 10 list is to make a list of your most likely next 10 buyers, and your most 10 likely sellers. Now, here's the purpose behind this is, if we can focus in on those people, and listen, you may only have one, one's better than none, but however many it is, I like to have 10 because there were people coming in, there were people going out. Now, a couple things on this list, and this is kind of a look at this. I kept it, we've got it now on digital. Back in the day, I still like got back in my I had a big, I had it up on my wall, and I literally had on there, I would have the buyer's name, I'll use the buyer's portion, you can, the listing's the same side, it's that both. The last day that I'd spoken to them, because here's the thing is, if they're really hot, you don't need to let them sit. They need to be spoken to at least every week. If they're a little bit cooler and they're coming in the next six to nine months, we want to talk to them at least every two weeks, somehow personally. And then also what we discussed. I wanted to remember what that was. And then also the area that they were interested in. What was the type of house they wanted? And the reason for that is, is that when I would read this every morning, then when I would look at what was coming on the market, it would cue my mind to be focused in on those things. And how many of us realize when we focus in on something, we see more of it? So we would see opportunities. I would see these things happen, or I'd find off-market properties. Also, I'd do the number of bedrooms, the bath, size of the home, the price range, the time frame, and the potential gross commission. Now, here's why I did the potential gross commission. Partially, that was done because if you total these things out on your 10 potential next clients, listen, if you think about it, you got your next 10. Odds are. And they could be a year and a half out, however, whatever it is. When I totaled the potential commission out, I would look at it and I would get excited. Because I would get excited because if I just focus on these people and I just help these people, this is what the potential is there. Now listen, we're not going to get them all, but by focusing in on this, on the areas what, of what we discussed and when I last talked to them, it gave me the ability to have them have the opportunity that when I saw something, I would reach out to them. I would constantly adjust the last day last spoken. That could be a week ago, depending on how hot they were, or two weeks ago. So let me give you the second one. They focus on their sphere of influence. I got a friend of mine in Raleigh, North Carolina, and what she did this last year is she said, you know what, I'm done buying leads. I'm going to start buying lunch. Changed her business. Because here's the thing is, is we can buy all the leads and have all these service relationships, but ultimately, until you drill down and you build the roots, you're not going to see the fruits. So what is it that you can do to drive those relationships where you're spending time with that sphere of influence, you're spending time with those people that are your past class, those ones that will send you referrals or that will do those things. Focus in on that. So on a daily basis, this five that we're looking at needs to have some portion of it where you're talking to some of those people in your sphere of influence. Also, they are focused on real estate related conversations. You know, Bryce brought that up. I gotta tell y'all, that was something that I learned a long time ago and it was such a visual for me. That right there is broke, that's rich. Broke, rich. How many conversations are you have? If you'll just focus in on the number of conversations, because ultimately this is a numbers game. The industry averages are every 50 real estate related conversations you have, it generates a transaction. So if we know that, and you, got a, and you want 12 transactions for you, I'm just making my numbers easier because I got a well, in high education. That means that I gotta have 50 a month to get one transaction. That means every week, I only need to have about 12 and a half to 15 real estate related conversations to get 12 transactions. So it's easy to be then on a daily basis to be able to track what I'm doing and make that one of those five for the day. They also say thank you. Um, I will say this, there is nothing more powerful than the law of reciprocity. When you do something for someone else, genuinely, now listen, you can't fake this, but when you do something genuinely for other people, I promise you they will chase you down to see how they can do business or help you in your business. So make sure on a daily basis, whether this is thank you notes, whether this is calls, whether this is just whatever it is, start your day from a place of being thankful. Because when we do that, what happens, like we were talking about, when you focus on something, you see more of it. 
The problem is, is that we spend a lot of time, a lot of times focusing on things that we're worried about or fearful of. And guess what? We find more of those things. So focus in on saying thank you on a daily basis. Also, they build a personal brand. Uh, you know, this is um, something that I have seen. It's, it's unbelievable. Listen, the time is going to pass. Again, this goes back to consistency. For me, y'all, when I, when I shifted out of sales and started to help agents, it took me 14 months and 72 videos to get my first 100 subscribers on YouTube. Now, when would you have quit? You know what I mean? The, the bottom line was is that I knew as an agent I was giving what I wish somebody would have given me, so I stayed the course. And here's what happens when you do things consistently. Hopefully, you get a little better. Hopefully, you begin to understand what people want. Hopefully, you begin to see some momentum build. Now, here's the beauty of this. You know, we were talking about Noah earlier. Noah's 24. Noah's done over 20 million already this year. And almost 75, 80% of that's coming from YouTube videos. It took me 14 months, but Noah didn't have to take 14 months because he had me. And he had other people that he could look on YouTube and find out how to do these things. The key is, is to find what it is you want to lean into and build that personal brand. The time's going to happen either way. Here's the beauty of this. And I'm just going to use this as an example just so you kind of understand. The beauty of this is, is now, because I've been doing this four years consistently on YouTube, um, what's happening right now is every second, and think about what this would do for your business. Because ultimately, I'm going to use Noah as an example. Noah now has 10 hours and 10 minutes every single day as of last week that people are watching his YouTube videos. That is passive prospecting. Noah probably doesn't have to make outbound calls because every single day those videos are working for him. They're building rapport. They're acting as a filter and people are finding him. Now, whatever it is for you, build your personal brand. It's absolutely, listen, whether you do it or not, it's happening. You might as well get focused in on this and there's so many different ways that you can do this. I'm going to give you a couple of things that you can do to do that. And I'm going to use some specific examples that you can use now, some things that are working really good for us right now, okay? Now, a couple things on this. I'm going to give you some frameworks on marketing, also that we, that I try to utilize anytime I'm writing anything marketing-wise. This is something that actually my friend Jimmy Mackin from Curator, he, he taught me this, and it absolutely works, okay? Now, one of the things that we do right now, and y'all, I was on vacation. I don't want to just have that t-shirt on, but, um, but, but consistency. I had to do this, right? So... Here's what we're seeing with green screen videos right now, okay? When you have Instagram and it introduces certain things, it wants you to use what it has and it will promote it more. It also wants, and you have to understand, Instagram, you know, their, their head of their of Instagram came out and said they are looking for a few things. They're looking for shares, they're looking for engagement. Now, how do you create an opportunity for some of those things to happen naturally and how do you get this algorithm working for you? This is what we're seeing with this. I'm going to show you my example, then I'm going to show you an agent's example of how you can use this as well. The green screen video, basically, and listen, if you don't know how to do this, we live in a great time. Just go to YouTube and say, how do I do an Instagram you, uh, you know, green screen video? It's going to tell you exactly how to do it. But what we're doing here is I took one of the Inman articles I had written. You got to understand, I didn't really start focusing on Instagram until about a year ago. So I've only got about 8,000 people there. But what we're seeing is, is we're seeing a bunch of momentum here. Now, what I did here is, is that I'm priming to ask for people to make comments, which is engagement. The second step is, is I want to automate the process so that we would have multiple comments. And then you have to understand, Instagram also looks at it because anybody that has a direct message, it's a more personal type of interaction, not only does it have a little more juice, but it also gives you the ability that the next time you post something, guess what? you got a personal relationship, Instagram's going to put it in front of you. So this has got so many different ways this is going to help you. I'm going to just give you an example of this. I'm going to just play this so you can see it, hopefully, and just hear some of this, just to kind of hear what I did, and then I'm going to explain each of these steps. All right, if you're a real estate agent that is looking for a professional opinion on what typically happens in an election cycle in the second half of this year and then heading into the year after an election, this is the article for you. Now, here's what I did, okay? A couple of things. I had the backdrop of the article, and I said who it's for. Listen, calling out who your thing is for is a filter that will absolutely get people engaged. You know, so I basically started with, if you're a real estate agent that's wondering what you can do in the second half of an election year, this is the article for you. Boom. If you, if most agents are going to be interested in that, okay? Then the next step was, is I go into a few details, and you'll see how David works. Childers, Keeping Current Matters CEO, gives us the information on historically what's happened in the last, the last 11 cycles that give you some valuable information you can provide. And by the way... For those of you that say you can't do video, 
Look at this. With that bald head and that green shirt on. I mean, come on, y'all. If I can do this, y'all can do it. The thing I did here is, is I gave more details. And I'm going to explain that in just a second when we get to this next um, slide. But, but I want to give some details. I want to drive home the value and that this is for them. And then you have to have to call that. I call that. Comment David Childers down below and I'll send you the slides as well as the video. Hey, I called, I called David because this thing had like, I don't know, 2,000 comments or something crazy, whatever it was. Um, at the end of this, and he said, "I've never had too many people um, say my name." I was like, "I was like, I'm just trying to be Beyonce for you. Say my name. Say my name." <laughs> <laughs> so here's what we did: we did the call to action. I said, "If you'll comment David Childers below, we'll send you the information." Now, what we did is we used an app called ManyChat. Now, ManyChat is an automated bot that it just sets it up, and anybody that comments on this post that says David Childers, it automatically sends them a response. And the response says, check your DMs, just send it to you. Then we automated it where it would send them in the DMs the information, as well as please let us know if you received this, and that way we'll make sure you got it. They had to comment back, I got it. So now we've got two personal, and we've also got this. Now here's what happens with the algorithm. People start commenting, immediately re responding, so I'm engaging, and then they see that we're direct messaging and it's even more personal, and this just feeds the algorithm. Now here's the thing, when we first found this, literally Tim back here and I, we were on our way to convention. The first one I did like this, we stopped in a Target parking lot in Biloxi, Mississippi. And I shot it like this, and we didn't have the automation set up at the time. I was driving, I said, Tim, can you just respond to these people as they come in? And he's like, man, my thumb hurts. <laughs> I mean, there's so many people responding. It just literally grew so fast because the algorithm catches these things. So how do we prime that algorithm? So here's, here's some of the results, just so you can kind of get an idea. Now, you got to understand, at this time, I, I had less than 8,000 people on, on Instagram. 30,000 accounts reached. Here, here's the big number, and you, when you're looking down here, is, is you start seeing how many interactions. 1,543 interactions with a basically an 8,000 or less um, situation. We got 721 comments, 147 saved, and 97 shares. This is one of those where all of a sudden, it's not just this one post. What it did is, is it primes the pump for your interaction with your other folks and puts your additional stuff in front of them, okay? So let me show you some things that we can do. Now this is actually an agent out of Delaware, this is a friend of mine, Earl Hendrick, and what he's doing is something that you guys can do immediately. Listen, there are marketable moments that happen throughout a real estate transaction. A lot of times what we do is, is we wait until we get the place listed, and then we just decide, okay, well now's the time to turn the marketing on. No, 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 there's opportunities before. I want you to think about this like a movie premiere. What do they do with a movie premiere? Before it's released, they start doing pre-release type of marketing. Then right the day before, you see it everywhere, on TV, everywhere, they do right before marketing. And then when it's launched, they do marketing at the time that it's launched, and then they talk about what a great weekend they had so more people come back and see it. It's a process. It should be the same way with our real estate. So this is Earl basically talking about that he's getting ready to, um, he's going on listing appointments on one of these. He's got one of these, he told me, actually. So what he did is he took a map, he drew on it. That was the backdrop for this. And watch what he does. In Newark, Delaware. Okay, so what he's doing is he's calling out, if you're looking for a home in Newark, Delaware, I didn't get all of it recorded there, but that's basically what he's doing. So listen, what he's done is he's called out the people he's doing, and then what he does is he gives some details. We have two new listings coming up in the next couple of weeks, um, so we can't give you the address, unfortunately. Um, that is not allowed until we have it actively on the MLS, but I can tell you where they're coming. Uh, one is a four bedroom, two and a half bath, garage, got a pool, um, that's somewhere up in here, and then we have another one that's coming on the market that is actually a four bedroom, two bath, somewhere down here. Now, what he's done is, is he's basically put this out. The shares started happening, he started getting some of these, this was early when I took this, he got four prospects from this one particular post that he did. Now think about this. Again, we're talking about pre-launch. Now listen, make sure you match everything. This is Delaware. Ours can be different. Make sure you do it right. But here's what he did on the last one, okay? It's this call to action. So if you know anyone looking in these areas, reach out. Uh, we can try to see what we can do to get you guys through or be one of the first people through after we get it um, fully on the market. So reach out. So it's basically it's utilizing this to call out and find a used prospect that costs zero dollars. You're utilizing what you have, which is the marketable moment of a listing coming, and you're utilizing the algorithm because of the comments to draw more people to you outside of your normal people. 
This is the beauty of some of these things that we can do on building the personal brand right now. And let me tell you the second one is, is they're called sun showers, okay? People are, they're, they're great agents for sun showers. Uh, this, the way that I came up with this was, my buddy David Childers told me, he got this big speaking gig down in Miami. And I said, man, how did you get them to pay you that much money to come down there and speak? He said, Jimmy, I told him I'm going to give him two things. He said, I promise you two things. I'm going to bring sunshine, everybody's going to be happy, and I'm going to make it rain. I was like, oh, wait a minute, I kind of like that. And so I went back and I found out, guess what that's called? It's called a sun shower. I mean, we had some of these the last couple of weeks where the sun is shining and it's raining. It's something, here's the, here's the definition of what it is. It's a rare occurrence where the sun is shining and rain is falling. So how do we do this? And I, what I see great agents doing is, is they do these things. So let me just show you what this breaks down to. First thing is, is it's rare. They're different. We've all got to be different. We don't need to be, listen, you should never want to try to fit in when you were born and created to stand out. Step away from everything that you're doing like everybody else. Start doing things a little bit different. Also, they make the sunshine. They bring happiness. Listen, there's certain people. How many of us know those people? When they start speaking, you just get excited. That's the person we want to be. We want to be that inspiring person. And the last thing is, they make it rain, y'all. They actually create opportunities consistently for their prospects. So what does this look like and what can we do? I'm going to break this down a couple different ways, okay? Here's one of the best examples of sun showers. And some of y'all may know him. If you don't, he's from up north, um, off Alabama. Um, and his name is Jay Johnson. Now, if you have not seen this, Jay and I started about two years ago. And I said, Jay, you got to start doing video. And he said, well, I don't like the voice, you know. And I said, look, that's your voice. And when y'all hear this voice, you'll know he's from off Alabama, you know. I mean, I was born in Florida, so it's not like I've got anything to speak of, but he makes me sound like I'm from New York. So what Jay does is Jay comes in and he started doing consistently this thing called the Friday Find. I was at a conference speaking, and I heard somebody at the table at dinner about five rows down and said, I don't know who this guy is, but I'm watching this guy, and he can say Friday and it have five syllables. I said, that's Jay Johnson. They're talking about down there. And so let me show you what he does, okay? What he does is, is he does a consistent situation every Friday. He calls this Friday time. Now listen, you can laugh if you want to. My man has closed $30 million on Friday fines in the last 18 months. Let me tell you what he does. Y'all know what time it is. It's time for that Friday fine. This week, you'll find me in Seagrove Beach, Florida, 31 on 38. Where are you watching from today? Let's hear it in the comments below. Now what he did is he did a call to action because the comments, he knows when they comment, engage you. Okay? So he starts out with the typical every single time. Y'all know what time it is? And do you know how many people I've been with him? I was with him at a conference in Las Vegas and we were walking in and somebody said, I know what time it is. It's time that Friday fine. I was like, my gosh, Jay, look at this. Who'd have thought? Here's the second thing. He adds interesting information. Okay, now listen. This may be something different for you. It may be a weekly email on whatever place you find. Find some way to be consistent and do it a little differently. Now let me give y'all some stats on this one behind me. This is 3820 East County Highway 38, number 108. It's a three-bedroom, go front condo, almost 3,000 square feet. Currently for sale for $5.7 million. And there's three things I'd like to share with y'all about this one. All right, every time he does the same thing. You know, he gives a little bit of information and then he says, there's three things that I'd like to share with you about this one. It's consistent every time. People know what they're getting. When people know what they're getting, they act boldly in that situation. Here's the last thing he does with a memorable call to action. That's a lot of sugar white sand to enjoy that beautiful blue water. Now I always remember, when you think of 38, think of Jay. And if you don't mind, please subscribe to my new YouTube channel, at Jay on 38, and I'll see y'all next time for the Friday Five. Y'all, let me just say this. Hey, listen, we're all laughing. My man is laughing all the way to the back. $30 million in the last 18 months directly from the Friday Fine. Guess what? He took 11 listings so far this year that came directly, and the people, the re prerequisite was, if I list with you, can I be the Friday Fine? Think about this, y'all. This is what we're talking about, about being consistent, being a sun shower, being different. And you know what he's doing? Everybody smiled when he, when he started talking. And guess what else he's doing? He's making it rain, y'all. <laughs>
He's making it rain. This is the, how we're going to make ourselves different, okay? Now, here's the third thing. They're outdoor cats. Y'all want to talk about an outdoor cat? Listen, um, I consider myself an outdoor cat um, because what I've done my entire career is if I don't kill something, I don't eat. There's a difference between an indoor cat and an outdoor cat. Here's what an indoor cat is. Lazy. Right? Am I right? Second thing is, they're waiting on somebody to feed them. If, if somebody doesn't come home and feed them, they're going literally, they are going to pass away. Because they just not, they don't have to feed themselves anymore. They're anti-social. You ever walked in and seen a cat? I got a middle daughter that's kind of like this. Um, you walk in and you say, hey, how are you? And they just, you know, they just, uh, don't even want to look at you. These inside cats are anti-social. As a realtor, we cannot be anti-social, okay? And the last thing is, is they're trapped without even realizing it. They think that the comfort of that home is so great. There's a whole big world out there. They don't even realize that they are sitting in a cage. And they think they've got it, and then they look like this. They're fat, they're lazy, they're waiting on somebody to feed them, they're antisocial, and they're absolutely trapped and they don't even realize it. That is not what we want to be. What we want to be is like an outdoor cat. Outdoor cats are free. Listen, they can do whatever they want. You want to go this way? We'll go that way. You want to do this? We can do this. There's nobody telling them what they can or can't do. Also, they're creative. They have to be creative because, listen, if they're going to eat, they've got to find a way to do something and make something happen. They also need to know that if they, and they know that if they want to eat, they got to make something happen. they got to go get it. That's who we want to be. We want to be those outdoor cats, those people that are making things happen instead of waiting on them to happen. Those people that are free and that have the ability to go out and make things happen for those people that we're entrusted to make it happen for, and when we do that, everything else is going to change. Now, I'm going to give you a couple things that I'm going to give you some examples because listen, this is another one of those that we can't we can't sit back and wait on this business to happen. We have to go make it happen. Now, I'm going to give you this. This is kind of an outline that I mentioned earlier that Judy Mackin and I were working on for a framework for marketing. Okay, so if you're thinking about whether this is a post, whether this is an email, whatever it is, what we want to do is we want to use this. These different. I'm going to use this acronym. The first act, the first letter is a P, and it's pain. We don't want to talk about the house. We want to talk about the pain that somebody has. In other words, if you've been looking for a house and need to be in there because school starting in two weeks, we've got a house that's moving ready. That's very specific to a very specific buyer. We're talking to their pain. The second thing we want to do is we want to agitate that a little bit. We want to make sure they know. What we're looking for is the head nod. When they're reading, they're going, that's me, that's me. So we're going to agitate that pain a little bit. And the last thing is, is we're going to bring a solution. So you notice what I said before. Hey, if you're somebody that has kids that are starting school and need a house in the next three weeks, we've got a place that is move-in ready and can be as ready as soon as Friday. If, if I gave a solution, if this might be you, reach out. I'll be glad to get you the details. You see what we're doing? We're framing these things up in a way. Now, I want to give you all some specific examples that Jimmy gave me this last week from Curator that are working right now, okay? Now, this, is a, this is one that you can re-engage with your database with your homeowners to find some potential listings, okay? And I'm going to give you his framework. The first is, is would you sell if? What we're trying to do is we're trying to create a curiosity gap. So that's actually the subject line of this email. So if you've got sellers in your database, this is one that works great. Would you sell if? Now, here's the thing. It's also called a qualifying subject line. Because what happens is, is anybody that clicks on that, y'all, they just told you they're thinking about selling. So if you can see that in your database that you're using, this is the people that deserve a phone call sometime that week. The next thing is, is I just read the annual cost of maintaining a home is 26% higher than four years ago. This is giving them a fact. This is stating something that is an issue. I used to never understand how people would say, well, I mean, you know, these, these older folks would say, well, I own my house outright, but I can't afford to stay here. Well, y'all, insurance right now, taxes right now, I can get it. Some of these folks are doing this. Now, what's happened is, is that we have seen the cost go up, even if the people own it outright. So they're connecting with people. They're agitating that problem. This is why many sellers are cashing in on the equity they've recently, or they gained recently. This is engaging the herd mentality, which basically states that people will move in the direction of a mass movement. So we want to create that, that, hey, listen, if you want to be like everybody else, and you want to do what everybody else, the smart people are doing, they're all cashing in. A lot of them are cashing in now on that equity. And then the last part is, this is where we're really just driving this home with a different kind of call to action. I know this is probably a crazy question. I mean, listen, you know, this is probably a crazy question. But if you got an offer, would you consider selling? 
Now, what we've done is, is we've given them an open-ended question that most people that have clicked on that, if they clicked on that email, because they, if, what, would you sell if, and they were curious, odds are the answer to that is yes. So we just qualified them there. This is a great engagement. And at the end of this, I'll have these slides for you. This is also another letter that is being sent out for potential out there. We just need to reimagine some of the things we've been doing. This is one that um, he and uh, Tom Ferry are doing through listing leads, but it just says, hi, my name is, as the agent. The reason I'm reaching out is because I'm actually meeting with one of your neighbors on Tuesday. Remember we were talking about those marketable moments? This is before you even have the appointment. This is one that all of the people that have been doing this are actually doubling the amount of appointments they have. So basically he's stating, I'm reaching out to everyone in the neighborhood because I'm offering a free home equity update while I'm in the area to folks who are exploring the idea of selling. I'm not sure if it's for you, but I'm happy to swing by after my appointment and provide you any insight on how much you could get. Now, this is two different things. If the sell, if they're thinking about selling, it qualifies them there. If they have somebody that's a family or friend that wants to move into the neighborhood, they just heard that you're getting ready to possibly list a house, and guess what, they're gonna reach out to you for that as well. So this has multi-purpose here, but this is reimagining some of the things that we've done in the past. Also, this is what he calls his ZBA. It's, Z, it's, it's Zestimate versus Agent, and this is a postcard that he's utilizing for this and getting tremendous results. This actually got a $25 million listing. So this is not just something that's a lower end. Here's the beauty of this. The Zestimate used to only give us basically what the Zestimate was today. How many of y'all know the Zestimate is the wrong? Am I right? It's never right. So here's the thing is, the Zestimate used to just tell you what it was right then. Well, now they got this little button you can see underneath there that says Zestimate History. And what they did is, is they clicked on that Zestimate History and they took a snapshot of what the Zestimate was before he listed it and then what the Zestimate was after he sold it. And then what he said is, oh, the Zestimate estimated my client's home was 1.1325. Our sold price is 1206. That's a $74,452 difference. Then down below, it gives a few of the details at times. It says any, anytime a home sells in your neighborhood, it has a direct um, and I'm not my glasses on. On your home's value. It has a direct effect on your home's value. Just getting older stuff. So basically what this is doing is this is a different way. It's a curiosity gap. How do they sell it for 74000 Because listen, educated people understand that the Zestimate is wrong. The average consumer thinks, well, they got all the data. Surely that's about right. So this gives you that ability to do something a little bit different, okay? This is the, when we're talking about Jay did that, where he's doing the Friday Fine, this is an email that actually is being utilized to be able to have a weekly, you know, just basically, here's my property that I found. It's the deal of the week, basically, is what it's called. Um, this week's deal of the week is a condo with Gulf Views and Santa Rosa Beach Forest. This is what we utilize. It can almost pay for itself. One bedroom, one half bath. You know, we give the details, we give the price. We just give them enough that if it's for them, they'll call. If you're interested, just reply, and I'll get you all the details, all the best. Now, this is a great way to engage with your database for people to raise their hand for more details. And when you do it consistently and you're adding value consistently, obviously you're building that database in a way where folks begin to expect it, especially those that are looking to buy. So a couple things. The next thing is, and that great agents do, is they don't eat their seeds. Now, here's the thing. What I've watched through my years and what I've experienced personally is, and we get a real estate check, we know the next one's coming immediately. Guess what? They don't always come immediately. And so here's what happens is, is sometimes we continue to eat all the seeds. Here's what I see great agents do. Every single check that comes in, there's a percentage that is invested back in their business. There's a percentage there. I've got this in my head, this formula, where basically for every 5% that you reinvest in marketing, especially if you do it effectively, you can expect a 10 to 12% increase in your business year over year. So think about it. If you decide that you're going to put 10% back into your marketing, you can anticipate next year that you're going to have somewhere between 20 and 25% increase in your business over that time. And the people that go really in and really want a difference, they're putting 20 to 25% in and they're seeing exponential growth. You know, I've got agents that I've worked with, they're selling over $100 million and they're putting 25% every single year. No matter what the market does, they keep growing. So understand the thing that they do is they don't eat their seeds. They invest back in their business. And one of the things is, is they do the, they do the basics for the different, do it differently. You know, we were talking about Noah earlier. I'm going to show you all an example of the letter we did. How many of y'all, when you get those postcards at your house for somebody that since they just sold out or it just listed and you just sit there and we just rip them and drop them in the thing? I mean, you can't, don't even hardly look at them. I mean, we're in real estate. Imagine what everybody else is doing. So let's reimagine what that can look like. Here's what we've been doing. Okay. This is what Noah did with his. Did you hear about your neighbor? Uh, it's curiosity, right? Of course, you know, we all want it. So here's the story. It's a timeline. 
Your neighbor called us looking to make a move out of state and wanting to maximize their value of their home. You see how he highlighted the key words? Oh, that's very particular there. Then the next stop, I got to work. By leveraging video production, I was able to attract and help eight out-of-state interested buyers understand the flow of the home as a coming soon opportunity. All organic calls from YouTube. And by the way, um, he's like from Missouri, the show me state. He's not just going to tell them, he's going to show them. If you'd like to see the video, hit the QR code. It takes them right to the video where they can see the type of marketing that he's doing. Next is a buzzworthy launch. This is the process. A, I created a special event that attracted 40 plus realtors and act with active buyers through an event style open house. Next up, multiple offers. After the launch event and several open houses, we received three offers. Masterful notice negotiation. The seller wanted to stay in the house until mid June, so we negotiated a longer closing period while continued to uphold the higher price. Through our comprehensive process, I helped my client achieve a higher price per square foot than the most recent sale construction, new construction sale. Now, think about this. If you're a seller, this is completely different than anything they've seen. This is completely different than sold in three days, like we're just telling people that we don't deserve our commission. You know, multiple offers sold in 48 hours. We need to tell them what it is that we're doing, obviously, to help them receive those offers. So this is what he does. The second part of this, as you kind of see, is he uses this. This is a great value. He just basically went through and talked and gave a market update. Now, this, if you're just doing market updates, this is a great format for that as well. But it's because it's comprehensive and it's easy to understand. Now, the fifth thing they do is they create separation. Now, this is, in my opinion, separation season for us in this business. This is the separation between the wheat and the chaff. This is when pros show up and amateurs step out of the way. Uh, there was a statistic I saw last week where at the first six months of this year, there were 60,000 net agents that left the real estate business in the first six months of the year. That means every four minutes, somebody's getting out of business. And I promise you there's going to be more than 60,000 in the second half with everything going on. So we're talking about that as, as this business, everything that's happening, every single second that goes by, you're getting less competition. Also what's happening is, is the normalization of transactions because this is an ebb and flow. So winter always comes after, uh, it, it's, it's followed by spring. So we're in winter right now. I don't know how long it lasts. I don't know what it looks like, how cold it is, but I promise you spring's coming. So when these transactions come back, we're going to have less people in the business and we're going to have more of those professionals that will have opportunities because there are more transactions. Now, let me just kind of give you this. This is one um, that, that my buddy David told me. David told me he grew up in Georgia. His dad was a race car fan. His dad told him, you have to understand that everybody is a great driver on the straightaway. So you think about this, in a race car, when you're on a straightaway, all you gotta do is bury your foot into the gas to the floor and everybody's going as fast as they can. There's not a lot of separation between people. Let me tell you what this is. This is the pandemic real estate market. There's not a lot of ways to separate. You just did as much as you could because we all had plenty of business. Now here's what happens is that when they go into the turn, that's where the separation occurs. Okay, This is the place where the champions are made. So here's where we are as far as real estate. We're in a turn right now. We're absolutely in a turn. And in reality, we're probably just coming into it with all the changes that are coming. So here's what his dad told him, which still applies to this. He says, you know what happens is, is that the great champions in race cars, what they do is before they get to the turn, they downshift. They slow down just a little bit to observe what's coming. Now listen, with all these changes on NAR, with everything going on, there's tons of stuff out there, I mean, you know, for, for those things to understand what to do. Now's the time to pause to equip yourself, and then what the great drivers do is they pick a line where they don't have to slow down, they actually accelerate into the turn, which almost slingshots them out of the turn in front of everybody. Now here's what happens is in the turn, that's where most of the wrecks happen. Because somebody slams on the brakes and somebody hits them from behind. They go in too fast, they hit the wall. It's the same thing in real estate. Y'all have been through this so many times now, after 30 years of this business. Every single time there are gonna be people that are gonna hit the wall and be out of this business. But every single time I've watched the people that slow down just a little bit, find a track and a path that they're going to take and they actually accelerate into it, here's what happens is when we come out, we just talked about springs after winter, it's not a matter of if, it's when. When we get on the next straightaway, because y'all, it's coming, it's coming. When that happens, when we come out of this turn, there will be people that are going to be so far ahead of everybody else that nobody's ever going to be able to catch it. Because we're all going to put our foot down again. And the people that are out here are going to outperform everybody. The key is, is when we're in this term, is that now is the time to create that separation. So what is it that you can do to do those things? Because ultimately, y'all, it is absolutely separation season. This is the moment that pros have been waiting for. This is the time. This is absolutely the time when you can take your business and be different than everybody else. The sixth thing they do is they remember where they're from, but they focus on where they're headed. Now, I'm going to give y'all that. I told y'all I grew up in the PDN. 
this is actually something that was that I keep on my desk. Um, and if y'all know what this is, you don't go to the country like that. That's a mason jar. Now, the reason I got this mason jar is is because I told y'all earlier we, we are 30 miles from the right here, 30 miles from the dirt road that I grew up on in North Walton County. Now, what I did because I don't ever want to forget where I'm from is this sits on my desk. And guess what this is in here? That's red clay. Not just any red clay. That's Valley Ridge Road. Red clay. That's the dirt from the dirt road I grew up on. Now, let me just say this. The reason why I keep this on my desk is that every day that I come in there, I don't want to forget where I'm from. I don't want to forget the integrity that I learned growing up in North Walton County. Yeah. I don't want to forget what it was to be a service in that community the way that people serve up in the Phoenix. I don't want to forget the people that poured into me that I owe it to them to be the best that I could possibly be for everybody I come into contact with. So here's what I do is, because listen, I believe hard work's important. There are nights when I'm the only one in there. And listen, when it's tough, here's what I do. Nobody else is around. I unscrew that. I take a pinch of that dirt. I just rub it in my hands. Because I want to feel it. I don't want to forget the integrity, the hard work that I grew up on that farm. I don't want to forget those things that I learned in that situation. And let me tell you this, even more so when I use this, is when things are good. Because it gets so easy when it's good to think it's all about us. And let us focus on what it's truly about, which is everybody else. So understand, every single one of us, you all got a story. Do you all realize every single one of us in here, with everything that life has thrown at us, we're all about a thousand? We're undefeated. There's not a thing that life has thrown at us that we haven't been able to overcome. So now here we are. They remember where they're from. But listen, there's a reason why we're looking forward and not backwards. Because we don't know who, where we're headed. That's that dirt road. But here's the thing. I want you to understand on a strategy that you can utilize to understand where you've been, but understand where you're headed as well. What I like to do with this is, is to take an inventory of your last three to five years or how long you've been in the business of all the sales you've had. A couple things you want to do is you want to write all those sales down. You want to identify the origin of each of those sales. Did it come from a referral? Was it an open house? Was it online lead? Was it whatever it was? You want to put on the side there what that is. Then we're going to get those percentages of what those sales are actually coming from. And then we're going to do, we're going to lean into those strategies that are working. We're going to get rid of the ones that we love, but they just aren't working. This simple process will absolutely help you remember where you've been, but it's absolutely going to launch you to where you're supposed to be going. Listen, I will say this. Wherever you are today, that's not where you're supposed to end up. There's another level of this stuff, y'all. So the key is, is to understand where you come from and move towards that direction. And then always try new things. You know, the worst thing I hate to hear from people is, we've never done it that way. Guess what? It's changing constantly. You have to be flexible, especially in this business. It's not that the message and the things that we do to serve change. It's how we serve that changes. So focus on trying some new things. And then number seven is, is they move from potential to productivity. Listen, there is a time and a place to talk about this. And there's a time to get to work. And let me just tell you what time it is. It's time to work. It's time to get from that potential to being that person that we were created to be, that productivity, okay? So here's a couple things. Will this year for you be a year of potential or a year of productivity? Because the year's going to go either way, and ultimately we've got the understanding and the ability to understand what's going to happen. And somebody's going to have their best year ever. I like to say this all the time. Why not you? Why not you? Why not this be the year that you're the best husband or wife, daughter or mother, the best friend? And listen, there's going to be people, no matter what this market does, they're going to be the best realtor and they're going to have the best year in real estate. Why not you? Make the decision and take the action. I'm going to close with one story and one more question. Around the turn of the 19th century, or the 19th, early 1900s, let me put that like, you know, uh, you know this, the, we didn't learn that at all time. Um, literally, Around 1900, in this little small town in, in, in Tennessee, in the foothills of the mountains, there was a boy that was born that didn't know who his dad was. Now, here's the thing. Growing up in the 1900s, not knowing who your dad was, let me just say this. That was really, it looks tough now, but it was really tough back then. And kids can be mean. They would say things like, hey, Benny, if you don't even know who your dad is, how do you know where you're headed? If you don't even know where you've come from, where do you know how you know where you're going? And people would say things. It wasn't just the kids that were mean to him. He actually was in the little general store in that little area. He was talking to a kid he went to school with, and one of the moms came up to the little boy that he was talking to and said, hey, we don't hang around kids like that. Now listen, here's the thing. If you're told you're not worth anything over and over and over again, 
You begin to believe it, and that's what happened for him. He would eat separately. He, when they were at PE, he would sit by the fence when all the kids played at recess. And one day, he's sitting out there when he was about 11 years old, and he overhears some of the boys talking about this person that had come into town and moved into this little town, this little small church. It was this passion. They talked about how this, this guy just seemed to love everybody. And even though he had never in his life stepped foot in the church, he decided, you know what, I'm going to go check this guy out. But everywhere he'd ever been, he'd been told he didn't belong there, so he devised this plan where he was going to get there late. He's going to sit in the back row. And if you've ever been in those little country churches, they've got the little two rows, you know what I mean? It's just a row down the middle. He, he sits in the back. He gets there late, so nobody notices him. He leaves early. But the first day he left, he left with hope, something he'd never had before. Because he was like, well, wait a minute. Maybe there is something here for me. He kept going back week after week. And every week he'd get a little more bold to get there a little earlier and he'd leave a little later. And about six weeks in, he skits there and there must have been something going on because the back rows are full and it's about four rows up. And for whatever reason, it just felt like this hope that he was feeling was something he'd never felt before. And so literally he forgot to get up and leave. Well, if you've ever been in those little churches, it's like everybody moves into the middle. But when he realizes he jumps up, there's no way out. He's stuck. He is panicked that somebody's going to say something. So he's looking around trying to find a way out. And he feels his hand on his shoulder. And he turns around and it's that young preacher looking that he looks up at. And with that big booming preacher voice, he says, Whose boy are you? You could have heard a pin drop in that place because that's the question everybody in that, completely in that area, had wondered about. And again, he said it even, it even louder Whose boy are you? And he just dropped his head in shame because he couldn't answer this. And with everybody looking, under, after a few uncomfortable moments, he finally looked up, and that young preacher had a smile on his face. And he said, oh, I know whose boy you are. By the family resemblance, it's unmistakable. You are a child of God. That's quite an inheritance you got there, boy. Now go and see to it that you make the most of it. Many, many years later, Ben Hooper said that was the day he was elected governor of the state of Tennessee and subsequently re-elected governor of the state of Tennessee. See, here's what happens is, I don't care what people have been telling you about this market, there's opportunity. I don't care what this market has been telling you and how much you've been beat down. There is opportunity in this business like never before. Y'all, this is, again, I'm not a professor. I'm speaking from experience. I've been through things a lot worse than what we're facing right now, and I promise you spring's on the way. Yes. Here's the bottom line. And I'm going to end with this question. Listen, sometimes, you know, you get these questions, you just let them pass. I don't let this pass. I want you to really think about this, okay? So here's the question is, whose boy or girl are you? Don't let that just pass. Whose boy or girl are you? Oh, I know whose boy or girl you are. The family resemblance, it is unmistakable. That's quite an inheritance you got there. Now go and see to it that you make it. Thank you.